Introducing to you first to my left, fighting tonight out of the blue corner, he's wearing black trunks with gold trim, and weighing in at 16 stone, 8 pounds, 8 ounces, or 232 and a half pounds. Coming to us from Queens, New York, he brings a professional record of 35 wins, 7 defeats, with 26 of his 35 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Madeline. And his opponent across the ring in this main event fighting tonight out of the red corner. He's wearing green trunks with gold trim and weighed in at 17 stone, 7 pounds, 8 ounces, or 245 and a half pounds. Hailing from Manchester, England, he is undefeated with 18 wins and 13 of his 18 wins come by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the former undefeated British and Commonwealth champion and current Irish heavyweight champion, Tyson Fury. He has got plenty of fans here tonight. The Tyson Fury word is starting to spread, no question about that. The bad man at all times. The bad man the rules was to hit, hit and punch his up. And when I shout right, the break clean. Final instructions from Ian John Lewis. Well, challenges ahead, Al, I mentioned. But tonight is about getting tonight's job done. You, for Tyson Fury, stubbing his toe this evening would, of course, be disastrous. Very small ring, it's a puncher's ring, and we fully expect some big ones to land. Well, where Al comes from, they call this a TV fight. <laughs> It'll be all action. It may not last long. Two big punches, but Tyson Fury wants another impressive performance. Well, he's come out. Boxing right-handed, there's the first thing out. Yeah, we, we, th now we thought maybe that they had switched him to lefty partially because he was getting hit with those overhand rights. We knew he wasn't going to stay lefty for the rest of his career, but they've decided to be a righty again. And of course, the overhand right is the punch that Matt alone, if he has a signature punch, that would be it. And there it is, trying to throw it right away. Yeah, trying to get in close and land that overhand right, Fury. Looking to control things from behind his jab, but you always sense that for all the best laid plans with Tyson Fury, that moment of madness is never far away. <laughs> and it makes him richly entertaining and immensely likable. Yeah, it's well put. There are two things about Fury that are important to note, I think. He moves a little better than people give him credit for. And you see him showing a little movement. And movement to Vinny Madalone is kryptonite. He just can't handle movement. Uh, he lost to Thomas Adamak, knocked out in five rounds because of Adamek being able to move a little bit and then land power punches. And by the way, that's a good barometer. Let's see how Tyson Fury handles Matt alone as opposed to the way Adamek did, because I think Thomas Adamek, somebody that might be on the Tyson Fury radar screen as an opponent. Yeah, Fury doesn't just move a, a lot better than people give him credit for. He is a lot better than people give yeah. him credit for. That's a good run. I agree. Follows it up with a left at Fury. Left hook as well, already got Madelon under pressure. There's two minutes into the fight. Madelon wading forward again, and Fury caught him on the way in. There was the uppercut, and I think that hurt Madelon. Fury has a variety of punches. We're seeing that here, nice and slick from Tyson Fury. Done just about everything right so far. Again, stings that. Left jab into the face of Madelon. Looks a little shaken here, Vinny Madelon. That's another great right from Tyson Fury. That jab sets that punch up so perfectly. Went for the right to the body as well. Madelon well and truly shaken up here. I think the real life Rocky already needs a miracle. He is 
a survivor, and he, for now, has survived Madelon. Fury used the jab as uh, Peter Fury is asking him to do in the last round, and it set up the right hands that he's talking about. Tyson Fury will be looking for the finish here. Always wants to make a statement, did it against Martin Roger with a much more disciplined performance. And looks good again here tonight. Well, the, the, obviously the height and reach is a huge advantage for Tyson Fury. But when he's fighting tall and using the jab and the straight right hand and some movement, he's a handful for anybody on the planet and will be. Now against Nicholas uh, Ferta, when he got stunned with the right hand, he, he said it was because I was having my way just like he is right now against Vinny Madalone. And he said, I got tremendously careless and complacent and I got stunned on the temple and I lost my equilibrium. So he doesn't want to let that happen to him again tonight. Yeah, it must stay switched on. Well, and Madelon much more reticent to attack now because he's gotten hit with punches. There's the overhand right that Madelon is hoping will somehow land effectively. Yeah, the look on Madelon's face in that first round was quite something. He looked genuinely shocked. I don't think he was expecting the power. Oh, right hand there from Fury as Madelon came in, and that's why he doesn't want to come in. Well, Vini Madelon is not a stylist, that's for sure. But uh, when he's in there against a, a fighter like Fury, who's got a textbook style tonight, that's for sure, it makes him look even more like a, a, an unskilled laborer. Left jab into the face of Madelon. Fury starting to wind up that right hand, just showboating a little as well. And Vinny Madelon again, coming forward rather slowly, trying to throw that overhand right, but nowhere near. Madelon not jabbing at all as he comes in, and that's part of the issue. He's just trying to win with the right hand there, but he's being posed a lot of questions and he ain't got any answers at the moment. Madelon, and there's a right from Fury, and Madelon is hurt there. He's a tough guy, but I think that hurt him. Fury is fighting with, you know, a very compact fight, not throwing extra punches. And obviously, he doesn't want to open himself up here to anything that would land. Already, Vinny Madalone's face is reddening up here. He does look compact and professional, does Fury. Attacking 
and getting hit with the uppercut. Tyson Fury has an excellent uppercut. We saw it against Derek Chisora in his most important win thus far as a pro, and he's using it tonight. Remember Fury, still young, just 23 years of age and so much ahead of him. 15 years younger than Vinny Madalone. Awesome. Madalone just can't land a blow at the moment. Also, Madalone went the distance with Dennis uh, Bostov, who is uh, another contender who's ranked higher than uh, Fury in, in most of the organizations. And uh, just as we watched with Fertha, who went uh, the distance with and, uh, Povetkin, you kind of compare the two. How is Fury doing against a fighter that other people tr had trouble with? There's that body shot, the one that did for Martin Rogan from Tyson Fury. Nothing tidy at all about Vinny Madalon as he came charging forward there, head down. They want Madelon to get as low as possible, and he's really staying kind of straight up. That's why he's being hit with the jab, and even when he does get low, they're up. that uppercut of Furies is an excellent weapon. Well, the way this is shaping up, he might be getting really low in a moment. Yeah. <laughs> Little skip there from Fury, good combination. Legs of Madelon just wobbled. Another right there from Fury. Matt alone, very similar in many respects to Rogan, who uh, Fury just fought, a short squat kind of a fighter who's a brawler. Well, he's in your face and he says, I'm going to stay here unless you get me out of here. It's a pretty simple question that Vinnie Matt alone asks you. The Fury's doing just fine at the moment. Well, Fury's doing it from a distance, which is the way he wants to do it, obviously, and Madelon's not able to attack very well because he's getting hit with those shots on a regular basis. And Fury will just wear him down. Good right hook there from Fury. Madelon comes forward again, little uppercut. He caught Madelon on the way in. Again, behind that jab. Does look a really impressive weapon, that left jab of Tyson Fury. Climbing into the gloves there of Madelon, but a couple of those right hands got through. You know, a little left to the body as well from Fury. Obviously, it's true Vinnie Madelon is, is an opponent who lends himself to this kind of attack, but you don't really see heavyweights throw these kind of combinations that often. And that's Tyson Fury's, that's what he, his mantra, he said, look, I throw combinations in there and I make exciting fights. And I, and he did it against Chisora in the tougher battle that he had. And uh, he's doing it now against some, a lesser fighter. in this fight, which is appropriate. So can Fury get this guy out of there? Because he'll want to, as Al has already said, he will want to outperform his rivals, if you like. Jean-Marc Mormec, who was mentioned as an opponent for uh, Fury in this fight, uh, had to go the distance to be uh, met alone. Madelon is starting to take some punishment in there now. Fury very, very accurate with those combinations again. 
the Tyson Fury mechanism for when he gets pushed back and has to be in trouble, he he very is he's very adept at kind of holding and bringing a fighter into him. He did it against Chisora, and it works. And he doesn't get hit. It may look a little awkward, but it's a very effective movement. Wow. Another long run for the big swing there. Biggest chair of the night for him. The other thing that's really interesting here is just how many people were on their feet at the end of that previous round. And really getting behind Tyson Fury, who is a massive part of this exciting British heavyweight scene. There are a number of British heavyweights. David Price, of course, is one of them, former great amateur fighter. And uh, Tyson Fury is showing us why he's won right now. Because the nation studying an uppercut from Fury. Again, Madalone just looked a little shaky there. Another great body shot from Fury. Madalone is wincing as those punches land. I'll be fascinated to hear what he says afterwards about just how hard Tyson Fury hits. Another right hand. For Fury. Those body shots took a big toll. And Madelon now coming back with very few punches at this juncture. Just wonder at what point Ian John Lewis will start to think about this. It's hard to stop the fight because Madelon's coming forward, but he is absorbing a lot of fun. Now he's in some trouble. Yeah. Caught under the left eye of Madelon. He is in trouble. He's unsteady. seconds of the round to go. Another combination from Fury. Blood is pouring from that cut now onto the left eye of Madelon. I think Another combination, big right hand from Fury. They may want to think about if he makes it through this round, stopping it in Madelon's corner. Still time here for Fury. Left jab. Madelon keeps fighting back. It's an ugly cut under the eye. And it's over to the corner. Tyson Fury landed some superb jabs, and that was a perfect example. And what it did was to set up the power punches for him. And the body work in that round was very, very special as well. with the trade when you're taking the punishment he is fury must feel now that he's on the brink of the win but Madelon is going to come out for the fifth talking about wanting to land that right that's what he wants to do Madelon but he's not going anywhere near landing that right and fury is going for the finish body shots Ian John Lewis tells him to keep his punches up. Didn't look to be anything wrong with him. You can see Vinny Madelon with that crossover defense trying desperately to land the right. That one missed by about a foot and a half. But you can see he's trying to do it using that crossover defense, which is a good way of kind of getting yourself in a position to throw overhand rights. Good accuracy again, though, for Fury. Must make sure he keeps his concentration, though. And he just turned to the left-handed stance, did Tyson Fury, making it even harder to land that overhand right, I think, when you're that tall and you're far away. Well, is he going to finish his second fight in a row as a lefty hit? <laughs> Back to righty, and that's probably appropriate. That's where the big power is for Tyson Fury when he is a right-handed. Well, given where he's from and what he does for a living, it's a cliche to call Madelon a tough guy, but he is tough. Even he, though, has been stretched to the limit now. He is just getting hammered, and the Tyson Fury wants the referee to stop the fight. He's kind of calling for him to do it. Well, Ian John Lewis had a look at his face, and you do start to wonder. He takes much more of this. He has to get in there and stop it. Stoppage win.
for Tyson Fury. And that was pretty much punch perfect out. It was just what Tyson Fury was supposed to do. Let, let's be honest, Vinny Madalone is a C-level heavyweight, and you expect him to win this fight. He did it the way he was supposed to do it. Yeah. And and if you want to compare him to the Adamex and the Bostars and those fighters, clearly he did it as well as he was supposed to. Well, he'll be happy with that, certainly. And you can only beat who's in front of you. And he did that, and he did it very, very well. And I think what, what, what I think you like about it is when he beat Padgett, for instance, not a good performance, not a, not a, a, a performance that was well-fashioned, uh, even though he won the fight and he showed his grit and determination. The last couple of performances, just like the performance against Chisora, were solid. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the official time. One minute, 35 seconds of round number five. Our referee in charge, Ian John Lewis, stops the contest. Your winner by way of technical knockout, still undefeated, and new WBO Intercontinental Heavyweight Champion, Tyson Fury. So Fury gets the win, a TKO, Madelon was brave but little more.